This is what the Russian world, or the Russian peace, as they called it, looks like. I am Zarina Zabrisky and I am talking to you. So we have just arrived in Kherson. We are downtown. There is the main building right behind me. And here we have a lot of local people with Ukrainian flags. I've never had feelings like this before. It happens only once in a lifetime. Never again will anyone occupy us. Never again will anyone allow this to happen again. And I am coming out on the streets again for the fourth day in a row. And I want to feel these feelings. And in my heart, I feel this is forever. Glory to our soldiers. And to all of our soldiers and to our president. Glory to them. All this week is possible when all, when all the world is around Ukraine, around our country. So thank you again. What feelings do I have? The joy of freedom, the joy of no longer being occupied anymore and from getting back to normal life. That we have returned back to our own lives, our free life, in our own land. Eight and a half months of occupation. Eight and a half months of hell. To live that life that we lived before. A good, fun, peaceful, happy life. We we had jobs, hope. What about you? What do you think? How are you feeling? No, in general, pretty amazing. It has been nine months, nine months, and they told us that if they're coming, don't go out onto the streets. They said, don't go to the streets. However, how is that, how is that possible? We ran out, we ran out. We stopped every car that was passing by our street. We hugged them, we kissed them. And now it's the fourth day of freedom, the fourth day of happiness. I, can, I, I smelt the freedom. There is no light, no heating, uh, but we have freedom. Everything else will be good. Everything will be fine. There's no power, no heat, no gas in many places. What is it, a hamburger? Or? This looks amazing. So this is kerosene lamps, and the gentleman here just said, like, this is the 21st... Peter Putin Lampa! <laughs> Say it again? Peter Putin Lampa! What's up here with you, suka? This is 21st century, uh, um, and then he curses, and then he curses Putin, so, because they have to sell kerosene lamps now in 2022 and kerosene is also right here i am russian i came here from uzbekistan when i was nine my parents brought me here and i lived all my life here have you seen a nazi here i've never seen a nazi Maybe on the TV, a German Nazi, maybe when they showed them on TV, never seen one. 
Nazi. I'm 60, and I'll tell you, there are two kinds, the human kind and those who are not humans. I'm here in front of the city hall, and behind me is a Ukrainian flag. On top of the structure, you also see a European flag. And right behind me, you see uh, by now a very famous watermelon, which is the symbol of Kherson. From older generation to young and to the very, very young, and even to the pups, everybody <laughs> is rejoicing. How are you feeling today? I feel a lot better. Literally tears of joy. We've been waiting for this day for a long time and probably her son was under occupation a lot longer than any other place. It was just so difficult to live with these people, which are not people, not our people, um, who seized our land. Did your child go to school during his time? No, we didn't let him go. We, we were worried. He studied at home. Tell her um, what you did during occupation, how you sung out, glory to Ukraine. In the streets, uh, he would shout out, glory to Ukraine. A feeling of freedom. You know, it's just become easier to breathe. No one is coming to you and pressuring you with uh, a gun in hand. And no one here just checking your documents just because you're crossing the streets. It's literally just the feeling of freedom. Just to feel myself free in my own private house. No longer with them crawling around, creeping around you, looking through the fences and checking on you and searching. You just don't feel, you didn't feel safe at night or at day. And now it's just unbelievable that we can once again live free. Because then even when you were at home, you felt that you weren't safe. It was scary and we, well, we were afraid of everything worrying that if you would do something personal on your telephone that they would they would take you away there was never every freedom and they could and they would take you away even if you were to order help and uh, even on social media if someone was to help you out it could also be a trap and they could take you and you know even on the streets they searched your purse they checked inside the bags your place of residence and i just didn't believe that this is ecstatic joy at this point. People are adamant that they will win. They hug their warriors. They shout glory to them. Uh, this is from uh, Kherson citizens. They saw someone in uniform and uh, they uh, begin hug us, kiss us, uh, and flowers from them. <laughs> <laughs> they are kind to each other, they are kind to their animals, to the dogs that are really scared by the sounds of explosions. Behind me is a destroyed building right next to the main square. And if you look closely right above my head, you see a chandelier, the only thing that has been left. Love 
we just can't believe it. We thought it was some dream. We didn't have any water, power or the internet for so long. And we still don't have it. You just feel euphoria and I can't believe everything that is happening. Even when we were told that we were being liberated, we thought it was just some kind of provo provocation. Because at the time we had no internet and we weren't able to confirm this at all. So still coming to the realization that it's, it's happened. It's just an amazing feeling. We, we didn't believe it for two days. And now we finally realize that it has actually happened. And we've waited for this day for a very long time. And we're just very happy that our city comes back all of the ambulances and fire engines and everything that they took at the beginning, at the beginning of occupation. And that life resumes. Everyone is just so happy. And they've come here with all these Ukrainian symbols. And Hassan is Ukraine. And we are just happy. So here you see people who didn't speak to their families to their relatives for two weeks. And it's the first time that they can connect uh, to the internet. Are you able to finally get in contact with your family? Yes, finally we're able to get in touch. And how long have you not had any connection? We didn't have any power and internet from October the 22nd until the beginning of November and then November the 4th and until now. I really want to call my niece to tell her that she doesn't need to worry and all is okay. My son, of course, and well, also, I'm, uh, I work. So under occupation, I've been working uh, for two months and now there's no internet and I can't work um, remotely. Are uh, you a teacher? Ah, oh, what kind of subject, subjects do you teach? I'm a teacher for the first years and I've been working for 42 years. And Russia has taken everything. It took the happiness of the childhood from our first graders, the graduation. Spring just went by and we didn't even notice. Summer went by, we lived straight through it. And then, and then the fall came with golden leaves and just beauty. And now my heart is just filled with so much emotion. God willing, all will be okay. Our Hassan, we will rebuild. We love our city. And teachers will teach the kid to hate the enemies and to love their motherland. How many of our people have died? My God. And now we are thanking all of those who have perished that we've got a peaceful sky above us. It's very moving to see all these people telling the story of liberation and uh, catching up with their loved ones. Tell me, have you not charged your phone for quite a long time? No, we have several already charged back home. But our daughter, she's in Germany. Have you not spoken to her for a long time? Yeah, you know, when everything um, disappeared, all the electricity, um, we weren't able to speak. It's probably been two weeks. Will you call your daughter now to let her know? <laughs> they already know. They've seen the news there. For the third day, I have a feeling that it's just unbelievable happiness and joy. For eight months, we've been waiting for our guys and girls, and finally, they, they came. Just thank God. If it's not a secret, who, who will you be phoning first? I'll be phoning my friends uh, located in Kiev and my, my family, all those that managed to leave um, and are waiting for uh, their trip back to their home. I hope that soon they will return and they will come back home. But the main thing for us is that our, our guys or girls uh, fighting for us, um, that they remain healthy and safe. I live on the third floor and it's just just across the street from the private houses. And in the first few days where uh, the guys who threw uh, Molotov cocktails and we saw how they were framed, from my own eyes I was seeing, I was watching out my window and I could see how they were detaining them, twisting their arms behind their backs. And I just couldn't forget this. And now, after November the 11th, you should just see everyone coming out onto the streets and their faces, their faces just light up. And uh, the next day, November the 12th, everyone, pretty much everyone was meeting and hugging. I went right over there to the end of the road and I was just trying to, to hug everyone because the first three months that we were under occupation, I pretty much didn't even leave my house. I did, but it was awful. It was awful. I don't even want to speak about it. They blocked TV and Facebook and we could only watch 
Russian TV, so we charged our phones, and you could still catch our channels on it. There's just so much that I want to say and talk about about this situation that I, I don't even know from what to start and how to uh, bring all of this information to you so you could just even the slightest understand what kind of situation here was taking place in our city for the last eight months and just how dangerous it was for all of us to even be even be here just hiding always and trying to um, not um, make eye contact with anyone we all sat home pretty much home and uh, only went out for you know these uh, absolutely necessary products and then returned straight home and from our uh, oblast our region um, we didn't even come here for eight months we haven't been here well actually it's the second time because it was first on the 11th of november and then when our soldiers came and then the second time being today because all the time there was here located some kind of checkpoints everywhere and their vehicles with the letter z on them and they had armed soldiers on top of their vehicles uh, patrolling around and it was just scary because we didn't know what was going through their heads and someone uh, shouted out why have you come here to free us for what i was i've been living here I've been breathing and grief has happened to me too, a heart attack, but people, even the decent people, they were scared to leave their houses and I live on the third floor and, and I didn't leave because it was just frightening. Do you understand? It was, it was frightening. And Our neighbor's daughter and her girlfriend was arrested. Uh, they let her go, the daughter was released in a week um, but as for her friend her, her friend is still missing we don't know where she is or her whereabouts and it's not really known at all where she is no not known and for what what was the reason didn't anyone say no one knows no one knows I feel just amazing our feelings are hard to put into words goosebumps yesterday the day before we were all here hugging our warriors with our liberators. I was walking around my house and there was a restaurant there where the orcs um, had lunch every day outside on, on the veranda. It was just a feeling of, I thought that they were sitting there every day um, and enjoying their lunch out in the open air. And I was just thinking, could someone please just put their uh, a mine underneath the table. They were there every single day. And they were there every day at this table. And then, all of a sudden, they disappear. And we just saw that our guys, they arrived. And the feeling is just incredible. And now, just like a completely different mood. Before, I would just come out to walk my dog. And, and now, we actually walk around freely and People have dressed up and look nice. Before, when it got to like 4 p.m., no one would step outside. It was, it was a complete alien city. Now, as we see, people are still outside at 6, 7, 8 p.m. And we are just so glad that our soldiers managed to do it. And they've only just told us that they have liberated another city. Eleshki, it is my... It was where I was brought up. Now it's a complete victory. We couldn't even manage to go there. All of my family uh, live there. And my whole family, which is buried over there, we couldn't go there, not even to the cemetery. My nephew died on the 1st of March, but the area was occupied and they wouldn't let us, they wouldn't let us go. I couldn't go to the funerals. All of the family that lived there, the, the females that he was living with, they all gathered and they just buried him and that was it. And now I'm just really glad that I can go there to the, to the tombstone, the cemetery with, um, with, with my parents and my sister. <laughs> the emotions are just completely overwhelming. 
a feeling of freedom and I'm just able to breathe so much easier. And even the sun is shining on us today, just completely impressed. There's no words and we are just so thankful for our um, warriors and, and to our president too. Could I ask you, what about you? How are you feeling? How do you feel today? All is good, especially after the liberation of Kherson. And we were here with our friends, we were walking around and You speak very good Ukrainian, yeah? Yeah, because uh, I study at a Ukrainian school. Did uh, you not go to school whilst the occupiers were here? Well, I studied, um, we studied, but um, when it was really loud, we sat in the corridor or in the uh, bomb shelter. And what is your name? Sophia. Thank you. Thank God we're back living in Ukraine and all is good. Was it difficult these past few months? Yeah, it was difficult. Did you have any kind of run-ins with any of the Russians? Yeah. Can you tell me more? We argued, but um, all turned out to be okay. I know what prison is like because for nine months we were in prison. And I also know what freedom is. And I bow to every soldier, all the parents of our soldiers, to the president. If I'm honest, I, I don't have any words. I just have no words. It's real joy. I don't know what else to say. The only word that comes to mind is freedom. Freedom. How would you now describe what it means to be free? It means to do whatever you want, where you can speak normally and not fear. You know, 24 hours a day is our time. I no longer have to walk down the market and feel sick to my stomach, seeing these unkempt Russians. You know, real tramps. Our soldiers aren't like this at all. They're completely clean and small and very tidy and careful with everything. Clean, shaved, neat. They're modest. We attended pretty much every protest at the start of the war. Were you afraid? It was frightening when they started to bomb, or well, not bomb, but shoot at us. That's when it was scary. You mean, meaning the protests? Yeah. That was the frightening part. And then we no longer kept. But still, we were so happy to see how many people stepped out for Ukraine, there were so many. There were people I knew, and they were pro-Russian, but what can you do? such as life. What can we do with them? Some of them have left, some of them have stayed. I say, better for them to go and never come back. Never return and everything will be good. Everything is already good. When they held the referendum, a woman walked around with two men with Kalashnikovs. They were just walking down the streets um, as uh, people were not opening their doors to them. They didn't break the doors, they didn't break in. Or at least I didn't see one case where I saw someone go and vote. They put their ballot boxes out close to the supermarkets. But I really didn't see one person that would go on their own conscience to go and vote. So I actually have no idea where they were able to take this percentage of votes from. It just wasn't, it wasn't the case. People were hiding during these days. What was it, something like four days that it lasted? And everyone was sitting home, hiding, with closed doors. The referendum was simply just a circus. They even knew the numbers before the referendum. I tell you that I, at the beginning, I was at one of the Ukrainian protests and there was just a huge amount of people at this protest. And they sat on top of their armed vehicles when everyone was shouting at them to go home and they understood that this was a pro-Ukrainian region. How they didn't see this, I will never know. My name is Steve Andre. All right. So uh, I'm from Detroit and I'm serving with one of the brigades in Operation Command South. How long have you been serving? Uh, officially two months. I mean, I first came here in 2010 and starting in 2015, I've been coming here for at least a month every single year. Yeah, it's, it's push your politicians to, to support Ukraine because 
we're the gateway to Europe, and if they won't fight, who will? Us. So just give us some support. It, it helps us, even if it boosts the morale. As we were leaving Kherson, there was no water, no heat, no power, and internet was working only downtown in the main square. The Russians were shelling Kherson. The next day, November 15th, Russia launched the largest missile strike against Ukraine since the start of the war. I'm Zarina Zabrisky, reporting from Kherson, Ukraine.